NASA found an express way to travel in space other than warp drive. The Sun will depart from the main sequence and develop into a red giant in roughly 5 billion years. It will enlarge, change into a scowling nasty ball, and then eat and obliterate Mercury, Venus, Earth, and possibly Mars. Can we survive the red giant phase of the Sun? It's possible that extraterrestrial civilizations have previously encountered this existential danger. Could they have avoided using spacecraft by relocating to another star system? It would take more than four years to travel to the closest star system even at the speed of light. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at an advanced alien technology that NASA is trying to hide. Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. Astronomer Jack Hills made a prediction about the possibility of a form of rogue star in 1988, saying it might not be connected to any specific galaxy. He reasoned that some mechanism periodically propelled these stars out of their host galaxy so they could start outward journey across interstellar space. Since then, astronomers have discovered a number of discoveries that suggest these wandering rogue stars do in fact exist and are not only a rare occurrence but rather a common one. These stars were also given the name hypervelocity stars since some of them were discovered to be moving at exceedingly high speeds. So what are these rogue planets? Have you ever wondered about all the celestial bodies in the universe as you gazed up at the night sky? You may have seen a comet pass by or a meteor shower head toward the Earth. You may also just stare at the stars while picturing every other planet around each one. Did you know that not all planets revolve around stars? It is true. Some planets move through space on their own, floating in the direction that gravity pushes them. These floating objects that are not attached to anything are referred to as rogue planets. How many rogue planets are there? Nobody's entirely certain. According to researchers, the Milky Way galaxy alone may contain billions of them. In fact, they now think there might be more rogue planets than stars in our galaxy. Rogue planets are challenging to find since they are constantly in motion and do not emit light. With a new tool, NASA is hoping to track down these wandering nomads. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is what it is called. By detecting microlensing, this telescope will assist astronomers in their search for rogue planets. This is when a star's light deviates in the direction of a planet's gravity. The Roman Space Telescope will enable astronomers to locate rogue planets that were previously invisible by detecting this light bending. What causes a planet to stray from the rogue, then? Is it just one day that it decides to go off on its own? Before departing into the vast unknown, say farewell to its star? Apparently not, no. Instead, a lot of them are compelled to leave their solar system by the gravitational pull of another planet or star. As an alternative, they may just develop on their own, independent of any stars. Recent research claims that rogue planets are being used as spacecraft by extraterrestrial life. An intriguing notion put out in research published by the International Journal of Astrobiology suggests that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations can travel among the stars without the use of an interstellar spacecraft. In her study, Irina K. Romanovskaya, a professor of physics and astronomy, hypothesizes the use of rogue planets, or free-floating planets as she refers to them, for interstellar travel. In addition, Irina suggests that extraterrestrial civilizations using rogue planets for interstellar travel may leave behind measurable traits or effects known as technosignatures, effects or characteristics that provide scientific evidence of past or current technology. In order to further our hunt for extraterrestrial life, she also specifies methods for potentially looking for these technosignatures. Extraterrestrial civilizations might leave their home planetary systems for a variety of reasons, including curiosity, exploration, or the need to escape a threat to their very existence, such as a dying star or out-of-control climate change. When civilizations try to migrate away from their home system in the latter case, they are likely to encounter difficulties very rapidly. According to Irina, if they attempted to employ spacecrafts to transport significant populations across interstellar distances, they would likely encounter difficult or impossible difficulties. Irina Romanoviskaya reflected on these concerns. Is there any way for advanced extraterrestrial civilization to move on to another planetary system? Rogue planets might be a practical option, she reasoned, if they were used in a strategic way. 
Rogue planets are advantageous for interstellar migration because they give explorers a lot of space and resources in addition to radiation protection and stable gravity. Imagine a planet with liquid water just beneath the surface, heated by the planet's radiogenic and primordial heat. This water might be utilized to make underwater dwellings that would protect occupants from the extreme radiation levels found in interstellar space, or it could be used to make food. However, on a wandering planet, how would we be able to hail a ride? Irina says there are a number of ways to accomplish this. The simple act of waiting for one to pass through their own planetary system is one option. Rogue planets may outnumber stars in the Milky Way according to research. Thus, rogue planets could occasionally traverse planetary systems' outer regions. The travel time to such a passing rogue planet can be reasonably managed if the outer portions are occupied. Romana Vizcaya describes a scenario in our solar system in which propulsion devices, for instance, could be linked to a trans-Neptunian asteroid. The object's course could be altered and might come very near to a rogue planet that is moving through the Oort cloud if gravity is used in an intelligent way to help events involving other Oort cloud items. A migrant civilization may, in a sense, jump on using conventional spaceships when the object is close to its periastron. This strategy has a major drawback because one must wait for a planet like that to pass by. In the event of an existential danger, this is undoubtedly not desirable. Another possibility for a sophisticated extraterrestrial civilization would be to free an existing dwarf planet from the gravitational bonds that bind it to their own solar system and its parent star, effectively transforming it into a rogue planet. Even another possibility is for the parent star to launch a dwarf planet from its planetary system. When the star becomes a red giant or a supernova, this may take place. In such a scenario, there is a sufficient cause for an advanced civilization to depart the planetary system from the start. The advanced extraterrestrial civilization could theoretically relocate to a dwarf planet in the outer reaches of the planetary system in order to be flung out of the system by the parent star as it expands from a main sequence star to a red giant, as there is a critical distance from which objects are pushed out of the planetary system instead of remaining bound to the dying star. All of the aforementioned possibilities include a civilization that settles on a planet that's roving through space. So, rather than putting yourself through the effort of moving once more, why not stay there? A rogue planet shouldn't be taken into account as a potential new home, but rather as a method of travel between stars, claims Irina. Over time, hostile planets tend to lose their friendliness. A rogue planet can support liquid water for a limited amount of time, but eventually the heat generated in its interior will start to decline. A planetary system with a star at its center has an abundance of resources and energy that rogue planets do not. It would take hundreds of years for an interstellar world ship to arrive at its destination in another planetary system if it traveled at less than 1% the speed of light. The health of the passengers and their capacity to impart information and skills to future generations on board the ship would necessitate a very substantial number of passengers. And that's going to end our episode. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to our videos for more, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.